What's going on, Savage here? I really hope you're having a good day. I hope you're having a great time in Warzone. And I hope that you're out here slapping these bot lobbies and just giving them the absolute dirty. But today's gameplay, we're going to be analyzing and breaking down a random duo's gameplay. Basically, I just load into the match. And just like I said, we spectate some randoms. And I go through the entire game. And we're going to focus on circle rotations. We're going to focus on target prioritizing and other aspects like that to get you guys more confident, get you guys more kills, and hopefully more wins in return. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Join the Wolfpack today. Don't forget to leave a like on the video as well. Let's get this video to 700 likes. And also, if you guys are tired of playing with randoms, or just tired of playing by yourself, make sure you join our Discord community. The link to that will be in the description below. Our Discord LFG pages are popping. Everyone's there looking for groups, and a lot of people have made some friends and gotten some wins out of it. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, here we are spectating my boy, Nick Money. The dude is rocking, uh, well, ground weapons right now. There's really not much going on. We don't know if there's anybody here as of right now. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see them drop and land in here because I was too busy killing myself in the gulag. But here they are. Now, guys, in situations like this, you don't know if someone's close. Always try to go for a search objective to get your money fast. Or if you're just not feeling confident with your area, grab the bounty on the chance that the bounty happens to be called in somewhere within your vicinity. All right, so we have two guys that pop up on minimap and they're clearly fighting either each other or somebody else. So I would go ahead and utilize this opportunity to push these guys. The biggest mistake I see players make is when the enemy pops up on the minimap, they just ping it and they let it go and they keep doing whatever they're doing. And then maybe two, three minutes later, then they'll go to their ping and they'll push it. And by that time, Either the player's already dead or they've moved on. When you see somebody on radar and you have the opportunity to push them, make sure you instantly push them. Don't dilly-dally. Don't waste any time. Just go ahead, be aggressive, and either get that third party or wipe that team. All right, we got the origin. It's pretty good hands with this gun. His teammate's coming up from the whole other side. I like that. They're pinching the enemy. Watch out. Oh, if you see a bouncing Betty, guys, what do you do? Or bouncing Betty, whatever you want to call it. If you see a bouncing Betty, guys, what do you do? Hit the deck. Go prone. Do not allow the bouncing Betty to uh, jump up and blow your armor to smithereens. Somehow it didn't really damage Nick that much at all, but it is what it is. Now, ooh, ooh, pause, perfect moment, boys. Okay. All right, so we're in a position right now where Nick, us, we have the origin shotgun, right? It's a great shotgun, a beautiful weapon. Um, you want the enemies to push to you. You don't want to jump out into the open with no cover and try to challenge them. Yes, the origin is an absolute unit, but at this range with two enemies, you're not gonna be able to wipe them both without getting down first if they're even half assed of a shot. So what I would have done in this situation is either A, just kind of played and wait for them to push up and then taking them out one by one, or B, you could even jump on this ledge right here and then shot down on them and got some damage on them. Would you have killed both of them? Again, probably not, but you could at least gotten one or broke both their armors. And at that point, your teammate could push down and finish them off. But the one thing I wanna stress is do not do this. He's basically putting himself out of cover. He's putting himself in the open to get shot by two guys at the same time. I don't care what gun you have, guys. If you're in this position and you have nowhere to go and you can't move side to side. You're just kind of stuck in a stairway and there's two guys staring down the barrel right at your face. Guess what? You're dead. Oh, fucking weird. All right, long story short, our dude Nick, uh, of course, died. We spectated that. He also lost his gulag. And Bastone actually died to the same team right after, but he did win his gulag. So here we are coming back to Superstore for, I, I guess, a revenge mission. Now, I'm not against this, dude. You know there's two people here. You know where the players are at. Get your stuff. Try to get the kills off. Play aggressive. I like that. Is it the smartest play? Eh, probably not. But again, dude, if you're hot dropping. You might as well just full send the entire game and try to practice your gunplay. All right, he's going to go ahead and grab the supply run. Um, it's not a bad idea if you want to get your teammate back for free, but you are going to have to travel a good amount of distance. And in turn, you're going to waste a lot of time. You're going to lose out on a lot of money. And basically, by the time he gets his teammate called back in, we're sitting at 96 players total right now. By the time he gets his teammate back in, we'll probably be around, I don't know, in the 70s, hopefully at best case scenario. We could even be down lower than that. So let's see what happens. I'm not a huge fan of this. I'd rather just... Finish looting Superstore, maybe car dealership, find four grand and then buy and then go to a buy station closer. Um, but, you know, this is his prerogative. So we'll go with this move. Now, you got to be careful. OK, this is another reason why I hate supply runs, because it's going to make you travel a good distance and it's going to put you by a buy station where you don't know what's going on. Right. So this buy station is going to be off of the street to the southeast of this compound. Right. This compound does have visual of it, not to mention the hill behind it. 
So again, every buy station is usually in a pretty hot area. And if you're coming in from across the map, you have no idea what's happened there. You haven't heard any gunshots because you weren't there. You haven't seen anybody fly in because you weren't there. So you're going in blind. Don't really know what he's marking, but he's mar Is this player legitimately marking exactly where he's about to go and then walking straight to that mark? Don't do that, guys. I don't know, I don't know the purpose of that. If someone knows the purpose of that, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you. All right. Okay. He saw him finally. Look, when you're coming up to a buy station, he just full sent down the hill, right? I Let's rewind the video a little bit. I would have done this. I would have at least got to the rocks and just peeked over it real quick instead of jumping off without even looking. And now you're getting shot up. No cover, right? Bad juju right here, boys. So here we are again, and you know, this is exactly how we saw Nick die. He challenged the 1v2, and he put himself out there with no cover, no protection, no way to get safe. And that's exactly what Bastone did. So I, I think they're great teammates as far as playing consistent, but this is definitely not the option. When you approach something you know is going to be dangerous, you need to approach with caution. I wouldn't just full send it there without any care in the world. You want to make sure you're at least glancing at your destination from some kind of cover before you just push out in the open. Not only that, but again, you have the entire hill behind them. You have the entire skyscraper, the compound to your uh, west, and then you're, you're going to have to cross open the street anyway. So not really the smartest play, but it's what happened. But now here we are spectating Neuro 2, and let's see what him and his teammate are able to do. All right, money-wise, they I mean, they've already got their loadout, but they have enough money for a UAV. I don't know if his teammate has a UAV or not. Um, Hopefully he does. If oh, Shit, he already got shot. I was going to say this before he got shot, I promise, all right? If you're on what I like to call a uh, few mountain, right? If you're on this hill, you want to utilize UAV because this is a pretty prominent hill. Not only that, but if you're going to be pushing into hospital, why not call UAV in right here too, right? There's no reason for your boy to be sitting on $6,100. But Savage, what if he already has a UAV? Oh, well, good question. I'm glad you asked. Well, what he could do is, I don't know, buy another one and give it to Nerotu. There's so many options. The possibilities are endless. Do not die with $6,100 in your inventory unless you're playing a stimulus mode. All right, so here we are with a fight, another team. Now you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful in this fight. You know, I love I love the mountain because this is a great spot to gatekeep. But when you're not in a gatekeeping situation and you can get shot from 360 degrees, guess what I'm most afraid of? Not hospital. This compound right here, boys. This right here, I've died at this compound on this hill or been shot at by this compound while I'm on this hill more times than anything else, I believe. It is, this is a scary compound. You gotta be careful because especially early game, and this is considered early game, but especially early game, people love sitting on the roofs with their boyfriends and just doing whatever it is they do. And with saying that, you do not want to just sit here because you're going to get shot from either hospital or, or the compound we were just talking about. And now we're in a third party situation and your boy Zero is on his own. There it is. There it is. All right. He just got down from that building to his right and still he doesn't care, right? So what's going to happen? Let's find out. That's weird. All right, so that whole fight could have been resolved, but it just takes practice to be able to think that fast, to analyze things that fast. So while you're fighting that target, you should have been analyzing the map around you. Where can I go next? Mid fight, that's legitimately what I'm thinking the whole time is where can I go if I get shot from behind? Where can I go if I get shot from the left? Is there a lot of cover around me? If not, let me work my way out of this position completely and get to a better location. He hid behind a tree and there really wasn't much better cover around him, but he could have left that entire area and repositioned. Granted, his teammate was kind of out there because what's gonna happen now is you get shot from the right, what are you gonna do? Well, unfortunately, he all he had was a tree to protect him from the right and in front of him, which of course, because of the angles, is impossible and ultimately costed him and his teammate their lives. But fortunately, here they are coming back from the gulag and landing on their free loadout drop right on the edge of the map. I love the fact that he's utilizing the M4 with iron sights. I love the M4. I think this is probably one of the most goaded weapons, one of the most consistent weapons. It's a little harder to use than the Grawl, the M13, the Kilo, because it does have recoil. You need to learn to manage. However, if you become a savage with this gun, possibilities are endless. Don't really know what he was looking at, dude. All 
All right, so when you're in this position, guys. All right, I want you guys to notice how he how he cleared that building, right? This is something you don't do. I like the fact that he's trying to clear it. But this is something you don't do. So let's, let's just rewind real quick, right? Just a little, little rewindy wind. All right, so he's going to, first off, jumping in this tunnel right here is not going to do anything for you. You're not going to be able to get further distance going down the ramp because your head's going to hit the ceiling. So right there, you're already slowing your own movement. Secondly, when you go in, your teammate needs to go in with you. As y'all both go in, your teammates look one way and you look the other way because what's going to happen is he's going to slide in and he's going to check his left. Here he is, checking his left. We're clear. I like the fact he's checking it. Um, but I want you to notice how he ADSs and his crosshair goes up basically to where he can't hit anything, right? So what is he going to shoot right here? What is he going to hit? The problem with watching top tier players play is that they're not actually explaining to you what they're doing. So you're just watching them just bounce around and just whip and this and that and just whoo, shit's going crazy. But in reality, it's very hard for you guys to mimic that because you really have no idea what's going through their mindset. This right here is definitely not going through their mindset. Now, what if little Timmy and Becky Sue are behind you and they're out there, you know, just making out and kissing. and they see you do this crap and then they all of a sudden whip out their guns and they shoot you in the back. Well, now you're dead. And now it's your teammate versus those two make out buddies. So you gotta be very careful pushing in by yourself and very, very careful doing whatever this is. You wanna control your movement. You wanna control your aim. You're not being impressive sitting here whipping back and forth if you're aiming at ceilings. Also, his ADS sensitivity is so fast. Slow it down. Guys, ADS sensitivity, low zoom, 0.4 to a 0.6. That's what I'm recommending. Granted, tweak it to how you play. Notice that as well. I want you to notice he just did the pinwheel motion when it comes to aiming, and this is very common. I'm glad he did it. So he comes in here, he sees the enemy, he breaks his armor, right? So when his armor's broken, this is the option where you can take your time and get the kill. You don't have to go in and ADS fast and, and knock him out because he's already at a disadvantage, right? But notice the pinwheel motion, notice what he does. And he shoots him in the leg. So he shoots all around his body and finally hits, hits him in the leg. Now this just comes down to aim and accuracy. Again, if you wanna be more accurate, you have to practice against bots. But Savage, I don't have enough time. Well, instead of playing Warzone for a day, maybe you just load up against some bots, do a custom match, and uh, practice your aim because this is very important. You're not gonna be goaded. You're not gonna be getting a lot of wins. You're not gonna be getting a lot of kills if your aim is slacking. So I highly recommend you guys take a day off from Warzone when you have some time, load up against bots and practice for an hour or two. Just, I'm telling you, practice makes perfect. I do like the fact that they brought inspection into this game. I didn't know they brought inspecting into this game. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. I did not get that memo. A viewer in my Twitch chat told me about this the other day and it's been blowing my mind. I love it. it. Makes me feel like Blackout. Makes me feel like PUBG. I absolutely love it. I'm a huge fan of it. But anyway, guys, what you need to do in this position, again, Savage, I want to get more kills. I want to drop more wins. I want to be the best ever. Well, stop wasting time. Time management is one of the most important things in this game. And I'll be coming out with a video prioritizing each thing and its importance. Time management, target priority, circle rotations. We're going to talk about all that in another video so I can actually go in depth with you guys. But here we have a situation where your boys are gate kept by castle or prison, right? Um, there's a sniper glare up there, so clearly there's a sniper. Honestly, it's not worth your time. Even if you down him, guess what? He's probably going to get rezzed. He may be solo, but is it worth gambling, losing your plates, wasting their ammo when you could be focusing on getting better position, getting more money, and playing aggressive and getting wins? First off, you got over $15,000. You need to utilize it, right? I'd bail from this fight, work my way to that buy station, and while one of you guys who has a sniper is sniping, the other one buys whatever you need, and then y'all can make plays off that. All right, good knock. Good knock, a little hard scope, you make hard scope, but good knock. Now, I don't know what Blue's doing. Blue is working himself through the ravine um, and spinning in circles. I wouldn't go through the ravine. You could have wrapped up on the backside of the hill and got to the buy station. I guess they're planning on pushing prison, which I really hate spectating games where, where they're fighting at prison. Oh, the guy did not get rezzed by his teammate. Guys, the enemy's messed up right there, boys. Look, if your teammate goes down, you need to be close to him so that you can get the res off, right? There's no point sitting here challenging other snipers by yourself and hard peeking with your head if there's no teammate around you to, to res you. All right, long story short, we've now skipped five minutes to the future. Again, 
Prison is the most boring place to go. If you guys want to have fun in this game, do not go prison. Um, sure, the hot drop may have a couple kills you guys can get, but I mean, what's around prison? Look at the map. Look at the map here. There's nothing around prison. Nothing. So we've wasted five minutes of our lives. Now we're down to 30 people left, and we're only rocking three kills as zero. I don't know how many Narotu has, but I'm sure it's not many more. They do have a bounty they're approaching right now who's probably coming to the buy station. Now, be aware of all the landmarks near you. Because if he is coming to the buy station, you want to be able to gatekeep him, right? Don't put yourself out there to get shot and picked, and then they push you. Alright, they called in an airstrike, and of course you're going to just sidestep it. If airstrikes or clusters are called in you guys, don't be, don't panic, don't be worried. Just sidestep where you were out, um, and get out of the way of it, right? You don't have to, you don't have to run this far, it's a little ridiculous. It's a little ridiculous. But I would challenge them. You have the high ground. They have the lower ground, right? You don't want to create separation and put yourself on a bridge and give them the vehicle and give them the shed. One, you're giving them the chance to get to a level playing field, right? They're going to be on even ground. Two, you're giving them more cover to get to. And three, you have nothing but a bridge. So if these guys were to push and shoot at you, what would you do? You'd jump off. And as you were jumping off, guess what? They would shoot at you because they would then have the high ground. So working your way out of a good position to put yourself in a bad position, terrible idea. Don't allow these streaks to bully you. If you can just sidestep them and stay in your position, do so. Now, I will tell you guys, when you ping something, I highly recommend pinging always, but when you ping something, make sure once your teammate realizes it's there, you remove the ping so that you can see it. So basically, if he was a lookout in the field and there was a big old orange ping in front of him, guess what? It'd be very hard to notice a sniper glare or see a player with that ping. So make sure your teammate notices your ping, and when he does, when he confirms he notices it, you then can remove the ping. Now, this is an awesome opportunity. The team you have a bounty against that's shooting at you, they're being third party right now. So this is your prime opportunity to push in, get the kill on the bounty team, secure your own money, and then shoot the team that's shooting at them. One of the main reasons why I tell you guys to put the sniper away is it because I hate snipers? I love sniping. It's my favorite thing to do, but there are very few of us snipers that can actually slay out with snipers and play aggressively with them. This is normally how you see players play when they play with a sniper. They sit back, they play very passive, they wait for the perfect shot, and then they shoot. You want to push the enemy, get the kills, push the fights, force the fights. Don't sit there and patiently wait because your kill count's not going to ever increase if you're playing slow and passive. These guys are clearly, I saw him before he looked at him just now, but these guys are clearly running safe. You can just judge by the, by the bounty ping. Granted, the bounty ping usually takes a little longer to update now. I think it's about 10 seconds before a new update. I may be wrong on the time, but it's something like that. Take some shots at the enemy and get the kill. This is a great weapon for this range of a fight. This is technically a medium range fight right here and his backs to you. So definitely just go ahead and get the kill. Now accuracy has a lot to do with everything, right? It's not my fault he missed his shots. It was still a better play if he would have hit his shots. I like the fact that he bailed out of the fight and he's repositioning while plating. A lot of people panic when they have their plates broken and he would have just laid behind the rock if he was in that situation. But I like the fact that he just bailed out, repositioned to get a different angle and help his teammate. Now, they are having to run from the gas. In some positions, you want to sacrifice your life for the life of your teammate. And I've done this many times and my teammates have done this many times. So if I know they're gatekeeping us and we have to leave hard cover and run in the open and we're going to get shot by these these enemies, I'm going to thug it out and shoot at the guys through the gas. And I'll sacrifice my life. He was in a position he could have done that. So basically, whenever those teammates peek up to shoot Naruto, he could have just peeked over, stayed in the gas, gotten a knock, gotten some shots off, and died, and put Naruto in a 1v1 situation, or, or maybe even just being home free if you're able to get both kills. Because the way this game is designed, it's very fast time to kill, right? So if you're ever caught in the open like this, you're going to die. You're better off just turning and fighting the enemy, sitting in the gas and fighting the enemy, then just putting your back to the enemy and running away and just thinking zigzagging really fast is going to help you because it's not. This is not the game for zigzagging. Sniper shooting at you, serpentining may help you a little bit, but a good sniper is going to blow you away no matter what you do. All right, luckily, Naruto was able to survive regardless, so that's good. I would go ahead and just bleed out. There's no reason just wasting your time. At least you can spectate your teammate and give them call outs from the, from the death cam, right? and hopefully help him out there. And GG's. 
He's gonna die regardless. He has no gas mask. All right, so what do we learn from just this part of the video? If the team that you're fighting gets third party, you instantly push them. If they would have pushed that team right off the bat, they would have never been in this position. They would have already fought the team, they would have already been through the fight, and they would have been moving on to safety. That they would have died, but regardless, they wouldn't have had to die to the gas. They wouldn't have been forced out of position by the gas. All right, but here we are spectating Sir Strikes, who is now in a fight with a guy in front of him. I don't know what his secondary is, but he needs to whip it out. You do not want to have a long range for a close range fight. <clears throat> now, this is somebody who clearly plays really passive. He waited for his teammate to get the knock before he pushed around when he had a really, really good, um, as you guys know, broken shotgun as his secondary. And here we are again, now in a position because he was so slow. Oh, yep, GG. And now we, here we are again with the same team that just killed the team that died to gas, not learning from their mistakes and going down the same way. Granted, yes, he'll probably get rezzed, but this is not an area you want to really get rezzed in. All right, so we got the heartbeat sensor out. There's clearly somebody on heartbeat. They have the numbers displayed there. It's already swiped. It's already shown us that there's an enemy up here, but he's going to hold it out again for another sweep. Okay, fortunately, the enemy was out in the open, no cover. All right, the enemy was ADS on somebody, but he was ADS in the open. Guys, if you're ever aiming at something, make sure you're not in the open. Granted, if you're being shot at, it is what it is, but he wasn't being shot at from another enemy. He was just looking at something, and it got him killed. But again, you guys need to move fast and efficiently. You want to be quickly. You don't want to have your backs to the circle the whole time, because if you end up in a position where you're in a... A fight with a team that's way better than you, right? And they have better positioning. You're now in a really f***ed up spot. All right, so we fast forward a little bit. And we are down to six enemy teams with nine enemies left. This is a very fun ending. I like this ending, honestly. There's a lot of buildings. There's a lot of cover. There's not a lot of rooftops. And that's one of the reasons why I prefer it. There's an enemy in front of him running to the right. Easy kill right here. Self-explanatory. Now he's going to have a teammate that's close by. There it is. Whip out your secondary and instantly be ready for it. Guys, th those guys have the same clan tag, right? KLHX. They have the same clan tag, so I'd imagine they're playing together. Duh. It's duos, two people. Duh. But that wasn't a team wipe. You still have the knock back here. Make sure you finish off a knock and end this squad's career. All right. So now we're in a position that I really like to talk about, and it's end game with positioning, right? It's all about cover. It's all about rotations. It's all about getting the high ground and not letting the enemy have the high ground, right? That's That's what it's all about. Unfortunately, right now we're being shot at from the guy who's on the high ground. He's got the building and you're running past all this cover. I get the fact you're trying to get safe from the zone. I understand that. But you have so many piles of wood you just ran past that were that are not engulfed in the zone, right? And instead of stopping at one of them to plate up and hopefully take some shots at the enemy, you guys are just running blind, not even looking at the enemy, right? I understand when to get safe, but you need to get some shots off. Again, sometimes you got to sacrifice one of you guys to get the end game done. One of you guys should have been shooting at the enemy while the other one was pushing up. Preferably the guy in the front. What I would have done in this situation is if I was in the front and my teammate was behind me, my teammate's getting lit up like he like he did, right? As soon as I made it to one pile, I would instantly ADS on the enemy, take some shots at him, use suppressive fire, and then allow my teammate to safely make his way to me. And then again, same thing, bounce to the next pile of wood, instantly ADS on the enemy, use suppressive fire, let my teammate come to me, and then so on and so forth. That's the best way to get yourself out of bad positions, especially in duos. Now, trios and quads, a little more technical and a little more crazy because you're getting shot from oh, 30 different angles, right? But in duos, you need to utilize this. This is why I love duos because teamwork makes the dream work in this mode. And so now we're now in a position we have to res, right? And we have about six seconds to get up and the blue will be here in a second. So you need to pop your armor right now. Instantly pop your armor. Don't do anything else but pop your armor. And then as soon as your armor's popped, or whip out your long range weapon. And one of you guys needs to be aiming at the enemy while the other one's getting safe. You may take some gas damage, but if you play this correctly, you can get out of it. Not to mention, they're in a fight right now with a whole other enemy. All right, he's played it up, but your boy Rage is not played it up. Now, I don't know the reason for this. Did he not have enough plates? If not, your boy's got two spare. Y'all should be communicating and get the plates off. If Rage Psycho does have plates, then he's just not really playing the smartest right now. All right, he didn't have plates, so now he's utilizing his plates. And y'all should be able to get safe. Now, in this position right here, you really don't have much to work with. You have a little bit of these trees you can hide behind, but that's kind of it. We don't know who won the fight to your right. Maybe the guys in the building who were already shooting at you. Maybe the team that killed them. Regardless, though, you want to get an angle where you guys can kind of 
gatekeep them to an extent, right? I would move up to the shed that's behind him. I'd move up to the shed because basically if you try to outweigh the zone, what's going to happen is you guys will be pushed out first. You guys will be pushed out into the open before the guys in the building will. When that happens, the guys in the building know you're there, or if they don't, they will see you out in the open, and then they'll shoot you and kill you. But if you work your way to the shed right here, let me see if he looks at the shed so we can actually get some visual on it. All right, if you work your way to this shed right here, or even this wood, you guys are now safe, and you guys can gatekeep them coming out because the zone will push out this building before it hits your trailer. And then you basically just kind of hop around and do that until you're, well, you're safe. When time is of the essence, do not use recon drones. Why did you use the recon drone? We knew that there's guys there and you only had 10 seconds left. I, I don't mind recon drones. I like it in certain situations, but not every situation dictates a, to use a recon drone. Guys, this is not the play, but now you're getting shot at. They know you're here. And instead of using team fire to shoot at each other, Psycho looks like he's just gonna run out there and full balls to the wall. This will work. If Sir Strikes a lot can push some damage shots on the enemy, but he's not even looking. He's got his entire side safe, and he's not even looking at the enemies. All right, finally, once Dan's plates are broken, finally he peeks and gets some suppressive fire. In return, Psycho needs to be doing the same, and he's not. Now, I don't like this position. What did I tell you guys a moment ago? Get to the shed and use the shed to gatekeep them. If you guys would have played the shed and sat there and just waited for the circle to push them out the building, guess what? The enemies are already dead. But because you guys tunneled on the circle and you guys wanted this area, this building, or whatever it was you guys wanted, you've now put yourself in a position where these guys, well, they've already downed your teammate now, but regardless, even if they wouldn't have, your entire back end is exposed to three other teams, right? Three other teams are somewhere over here and you're just back to them, not giving a shit. So again, should have played the shed. You can just bounce from one to one. You don't have to get his in zone immediately. The circle will not move that fast. Could have gate kept these guys, killed these guys, and then work the rest of the circle. Again, utilize suppressive fire. Oh, oh, that's weird, Savage. How'd you know he's gonna get shot from behind? So the next time you see a circle and you need to get to the circle and there's a team gatekeeping you and they're outside the circle too, you can kind of look at the entire zone and be like, okay, who's going to get pushed out first? Okay, it's us. Let's make this play off of that and maybe bounce from place to place instead of just beelining for the zone, right? Or if they're the ones that's going to hit first, make a play off of that and same situation, right? You got to think long-term. Play this game as if you're playing chess. And if you've never played chess, you're missing out. It's a great game. Very strategic, very brain-intensive game. All right, here we are. Spectating uh, Childish Brandino and Hardcore Greg. Now, they are aware that they're enemies that way. You can tell by the ping, plus they watch this whole fight go down, right? But he doesn't see the guy that I saw legitimately like seven seconds ago. This guy right here by the rock at all. He might see him now. This guy by the rock, he's out there in the open with no cover, and he's going to make a beeline for that building. This is a perfect opportunity to just absolutely annihilate this man. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, he spots him. Ooh. Ooh, there you go. Now it's a 2v1 uh, with this fight, but remember, there's a solo somewhere else around this area. Y'all have the high ground. Y'all have the advantage. Just beware of that solo. He could be hiding in the bush, and if you've watched my videos, all of them, you know exactly what game and what video I'm referring to when it comes to bush campers. Comment in the section below if you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, just based on how players play this game and my game since from the massive amount of games I've played, I know there's probably still a guy in this building marked on blue. That's where the teammate you killed was at. And players don't really like to move out of position until they absolutely have to. Also something you guys need to get out of the habit of. Move early. Don't wait for the circle to push you out because then you end up in a position where you're fighting the gas and an enemy team. With that being said, your boy, Hardcore Greg, should not be in this position. He's outside of the zone. I like the fact he wants visual on this compound. I like that, but he has no cover in front of him. So if this guy was to peek the window, peek the doorway, peek the back side of the building, peek the left side of the building, he wouldn't really survive if the enemy has a decent shot. Oh, then he went prone too. Oh God, you hate guys. I, I'm, I'm legitimately gonna make a video that's 30 minutes long of me just standing here saying, stop proning, stop proning, stop proning. You have to stop. If you would have, if you would have prone, he might've had a better shot. He would have had a visual on the guy. And now it's a 1v1v1. You've now gone from having 
the complete advantage, having the high ground, having two people against two solos. Now it's a 1v1 fight. There's no reason. Also, you got to learn trigger control, guys. When the target moves out of the crosshair, stop firing. This guy's wasted so much ammo. He's wasted 25 bullets, and he's hit the target like six times, right? Six times. So don't shoot at the enemy. If the enemy's not there to shoot at, right? Don't spray and pray. Not to mention your boy's got an airstrike he could utilize too, and he didn't. Now he's kind of just him running that far from the rock and just plating up in the open is very ballsy. I would have just played the rock that way. I couldn't have got shot in the head, um, but it ended up working out. There's a guy to his left. Hmm. Comes the audio, guys. Get a decent headset. Don't use your TV speakers if you guys really are serious about getting better at Warzone because this game looks like it's going to prolong um, throughout entire 2021 because Treyarch looks like they're really going full in on it, right? But if you guys want to improve at this game, get a decent headset. Just make sure you guys are utilizing some decent headsets so you can hear footsteps like that. I heard them instantly. I wanted to pause it. I shouldn't have paused it, but I wanted to let you guys know before he died. He died just like that. So again, that team, Childish Brandino and his squad went from having the best position to being knocked the f out of the game because they played the situation wrong. And again, things like this is the exact reason why I created this video series. <clears throat> Got the enemy on heartbeat to the right side. This is pretty explanatory. You don't need that. You don't need it. No. What is going to happen if you're trying to pick the shit up and the guy rounds the corner and shoots you in the head? You're going to be really pissed off. You have eight plates. If it takes you the three plates you have and the eight plates that are in your reserve to kill this guy and you need another armor box in order to get more plates, you don't deserve to win, right? You don't need this. It's a 1v1. It's in-game. The circle's moving in your favor. You need to be focused on that rock right there and only that rock. And as soon as the enemy comes around, shoot him in the face. But the enemy's in gas, choking. He's getting the precision. The enemy is to his left, and he's going to have to run around this corner. So let's see what he does. I, for one, would just wait and shoot him with the gun. Um, I have a feeling he's probably going to use the airstrike. But I would be... He's not even turning... He got the f kill. He got the kill! But as I was going to say, um, you don't want to... Does it matter what I was going to say? It doesn't matter what I was going to say. He got the kill. GG's. Look, guys, in situations, you need to look at the totality of the game, right? Where are you at in the game? Are you in a 1v1 situation at the end? Do you really need the stuff you're picking up? Can you just get the kill? Why would you put yourself in situations to get shot when you're trying to loot in a 1v1, right? When you don't need anything. Also, too, when you have position, what did we learn from this video? Especially the end game. When you have position, maintain position. Maintain teamwork. Don't put yourself out there to watch one area, right? Your boy that went prone on the rock and got annihilated and really just forced his team to lose that game. Um, that was a very unfortunate fight. It could have been avoided just from simple game mechanics, simple game knowledge. But guys, again, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think there's a lot of lessons in this video to learn. So I hope you guys learned something. If you did learn anything, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today. And again, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 700 likes. And as always, join our Discord community. The link to that will be in the description below. You have a good one and good looking Warzone. Yo, what's going on? I really hope you're having a good day. I hope you're slaying out in Warzone. I really hope these videos are helping you improve as a player. If they are, make sure you check out some other tips and tricks videos. And as always, subscribe by hitting the button below. Y'all have a good one and keep on improving.